Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keenan Gaynor. I'm an authorized uh, lighting and energy management systems technician for Leviton. Uh, today we're going to be talking about your Green Max 16 cabinet. Uh, you actually have two located on the, on the premises here, uh, along with some digital switches and some photo cells and some occupancy sensors as well. But uh, just to get into the meat and potatoes of the actual cabinet, you have a command module assembly which consists of a power supply, a master processing unit or as we refer to as an MPU, and you have an analog input board or AI board. The AI board is used to uh, configure inputs such as photo cells, occupancy sensors, low voltage switches, things of that nature. Uh, the switches that you have installed are actually digital switches, so they're actually powered via Cat6 cable tied into your power supply here on both the 750 milliamp ports of the power supply. Okay? Uh, your, <coughs> your relays, you're going to have, uh, in this particular cabinet, you're going to have one particular type, which is the 1CB, or the return to close relay. Basically, all that says is that if I remove power from the processor, those relays will automatically close, giving you lights in the space. So for whatever reason, if you lose the control circuit that powers this guy, that powers the power supply, all your relays will close and the rest of your lights will come on until power is restored to your power supply. Any questions so far? Great. Okay, so on your MPU, you have additional ports. You have an HDU port, which is meant for your handheld unit. Okay, your handheld unit is a programming device only. This does not allow you remote control of the system. It has an Ethernet port on it, but you cannot use it to go online to change your programming in the system. Currently, this is not supported. Okay. Also, on your MPU, you have an addressable dip switch here. Each device on the network, anything that has a CAT6 line running to it, has to have an, ad an addressable dip switch with a unique ID. Okay, so every device in the network has its own ID so that the system can differentiate between what device is what device. You also have the same thing here with the AI board. Also, on the MPU, you have your LCD, to screen, L LCD display, sorry, which uh, alternates between the node ID, in which case this panel is 001, and the CAB, is just the indication that it's cabinet 001. Okay. Uh, underneath that, you have a 2 gig micro SD card. All of your programming information and files are stored to this SD card. All, everything is done via flash drive, so you don't have to ever worry about losing your programming if your processor goes bad. Everything, as soon as the processor is pulled up, is pulled off of this SD card. So you will never have to worry about losing your programming. On top of that, anytime you save your configuration from the handheld unit to this MPU, it compiles that information, stores it on the SD card, and then forwards it to the next panel that is in line with the, with the network. So not only do you have a copy here, but you'll have a copy at the other panel as well. So it mirrors, it's mirrors yes. the information. Yes, right? exactly. Ah. Okay. Uh, any other questions so far? Okay. Uh, to power up your handheld unit. Your handheld unit for memory purposes has four AA metal, nickel metal hydride batteries. Okay, Only use nickel metal hydride, hydride rechargeable batteries for this device. If you use regular batteries, you will damage it. Okay? The reason I say that is because as soon as you plug it in, whether it's on or off, the system charges the batteries. Okay? So, when you plug in, you're going to plug in, you're going to use a Cat5 or Cat6 cable. It's going to be a patch cable, so both ends of the cable will have the same color code from pin to pin. Okay? And you'll plug into your HDU port on your MPU, and you'll plug into the green connector on the, on the top of the handheld unit. So once I do that, Mind you, I'm charging my batteries. Now, also on the top of the handheld unit, you'll see you have a USB port and you have a power button 
And remember we talked about the Ethernet port is not supported at this time. Okay? Your USB port, you're only going to be using this port if you're on the phone with a factory technician. Okay? Tech support's number is located right here on the door. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right under the uh, right under the Levinson logo here. The US tech support number is 1-800-959-6004. And on your training syllabus, you actually have your project name and your inquiry number pertaining to this particular project. So you'll use that as a reference when you call tech support. Okay? So, your power button. To turn the unit on, you just press the power button. You have your uh, LCD backlight display will come up. It takes it about approximately 45 seconds for the, for the handheld unit to boot up and go through its process. When it does that, it will reach its home screen which will display your project name right underneath the Levinson logo. And please point out the power button again. The power button is located right here, right next to your, to your USB port. Okay, so we've got the Levinson screen coming up. It's finishing its process. It's basically making sure that it's talking to the MPU and making sure that the network is stable before it comes online. Okay, so this is your home screen. It says underneath Project Victor Valley. If you notice, this is not a touch screen. Okay, so all of your all of your selections and menu options will be accessed through your cursor arrows. You have an escape, a home, a back, and a next key. Your back and your next keys are synonymous with the tab key that you'd find on a normal keyboard. Okay, so you would actually use that to. Uh, go back and forth between fields. Or in some cases you'll be allowed to use the right and the left arrows. You have an OK button and an enter button which provide the same function. It doesn't matter which one you use. You have an alphanumeric keypad which allows you to enter values or uh, change description names. Okay, But in the case of this particular training we're only really going to go over the status menu and the schedules because I think that's really the only thing that you'll probably be changing in the future. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when I go into my monitor tab, which is the first tab underneath here, I'm going to select OK. It's already highlighted. It's going to bring up the time of day, and we're right on the money there. It also gives you your sunrise and sunset times for each day. So for your, say you had an exterior schedule, and you wanted the lights to run off an astronomical clock, in which case they do here, uh, they actually turn on 15 minutes before sunset and turn off, I'm sorry, 10 minutes before sunset and 10 minutes after sunrise they turn off. Okay, So you would actually use this information to be able to test that by changing the time to mimic your actual shuttle. So underneath that we have a status button. If I select OK, what it's doing right now is that it's going through and it's pulling every relay in the system. So you have two panels here that are tied into the network and I can actually look at the output of each relay from this one location. I don't have to go to the next panel to see what it's doing. Okay? And I don't know if you can see well here on the status screen, but each one of these relays are labeled as to what they control, and it also tells you which panel they're coming out of. 